Hello, YouTube. Today, we're finishing up the tricks with the leader of the pack. I've had a lot of fun with them all, but I think this might be my favorite. Also, it's been about half a year since I started working on this series, and I think after this video, it might be time to start branching out into some other shows and fandoms. But don't worry, there will be more winks. I really want to get to the end of this one day. Now, let's get into the video. Icy grew up in a very wealthy and privileged environment with the name Elysia. She comes from a noble family of Arachleon. I'm thinking her parents are probably a count and countess. However, they live almost entirely out of the public eye, even by Arachleon standards. I'll note that most average citizens don't even know what Prince Sky looks like. You see, generations ago, before the ancestral witches began their rise to power, the child of their leader, Belladonna, married a young Heraclean nobleman, and they had started a family. Belladonna as well was accepted into the family, but when she and her sisters unleashed their plan on the world, her daughter stood against her. Still, the family was never the same. They lived in disgrace for the rest of their lives, and the shame was passed on through the generations. They managed to retain their status and much of their wealth, However, they avoided the public as much as possible. Though, by the time of the story, this practice was not as strict. There was immense pressure to be perfect. Icy and her older sister, Sophia, were taught to act only with poise and grace, and to always wear a proper mask of prestige. Eventually, after consulting many different kinds of advisors, spiritual, legal, PR managers, her family decided it was time to rejoin the company of Heraclion's elite and begin to rebuild the reputation of their household. This was the only way to ever grow their power and increase their wealth, after all. When Sophia was 13 and Icy 10, their family began attending events and galas, and their parents would often showcase their two beautiful and talented daughters. After a few years, they were even bold enough to hold a fundraising dinner at their own manor. Unfortunately, they would come to regret this, as a few days later, Sophia, now 17, was kidnapped and held for ransom. Icy's parents paid what was demanded, but their firstborn was never seen again. After this, the family returned to their reclusive ways, never leaving their manor's grounds. At this point, Icy was only 14. But the resemblance between her and her older sister was so strong that her parents couldn't even stand to look at her. They fell into a depression from which they never emerged, and their small staff basically raised Icy from then on. She was left grieving almost entirely alone, and grew a deep resentment towards her parents. To make matters worse, the public soon began to speculate on Sophia's disappearance, and whether or not her parents had any involvement. Some even theorized Icy had done it, and they covered it up. After all, she was never as good at smiling and waving as her sister was, so she was never as beloved by her people. Clearly, she was hiding a sinister side. Icy lost any friends she may have gained in the past few years. She was alone, angry, and vulnerable. When Icy, now 18, began attending Cloud Tower, she had no intentions of making any kind of social connections. She was there to learn magic, to master her control of her powers. Her connection to ice and snow was strong. The cold was comforting to her. There was no better feeling than the prickle of frigid air enveloping her body. And when the room is below freezing, it's unlikely anyone would show up to bother her. Also, in the original, apparently Icy's source of power is dead planets. Um, I'm not sure if that's the four kids version, I can't remember, but it's really fun because it means that she's actually getting strength from Bloom's destroyed homeworld. Brutal. I would like to keep that connection between death and cold in my rewrite. It makes sense since all life derives from the dragon's flyer, so if Bloom's powers are life, then Icy's are death. Before the tricks, Icy was a loner. She was constantly studying and practicing her magic, and she was incredibly advanced. 
she ended up getting the attention of Griffin, who was compelled to take the young witch under her wing. Icy appreciated the recognition of her hard work, but this also fed into her feelings of superiority over her peers. Headmistress Griffin knew of Icy's ancestry, but decided she shouldn't be judged only for a connection to the ancestral witches in her past. Hmm. Not everyone at Cloud Tower was aware of who Icy's family was, but they were almost all scared of her off the bat. Still, some people had the gall to ask about her sister, and they were always met with nothing but a silent, icy glare. Despite all of her attempts to remain aloof, though, she eventually did end up integrating into the social aspect of Cloud Tower. Stormy's pride and appreciation towards her family's heritage managed to charm Icy, and Darcy's dry snark actually made her laugh a few times. The three became, like, sisters. I wanted Icy to read as beautiful, slightly ethereal, yet still somehow off-putting. Someone you would be scared to approach, yet it's hard to look away from. Some of you may have noticed a pretty heavy inspiration for her look. Azula. I gave her a very similar hairstyle, two face framing pieces, and a bun. Both girls were raised in a high-status, wealthy family and expected to achieve greatness. Both are leader in a trio of highly skilled young ladies, and both are calculated, dangerous perfectionists with a sense that they are owed power. I really like it. Another comparison that is probably inevitable is Elsa from Disney's Frozen. I mean, they both have ice powers. I guess it would be more in a sense of like, what if? What if Elsa was really an evil person? What if Anna had died and their parents were even worse? I really don't think they're that similar. I just think the connection is probably kind of hard to avoid. Icy's casual outfit in Winx sticks out when compared to other witches. She's wearing pastels while most of her classmates seem to wear darker colors. And I really wanted to keep that. I like the idea that she can make soft light colors seem intimidating. It's also a way to represent that she was raised by people who were ashamed of their witch heritage. I figure fairies are the more respected way to practice magic, so her parents subconsciously encouraged her to dress like a fairy. But when she goes into her witch form, her outfit will still have those darker tones, since she's embracing her magic and her ancestry. I went for a very girl boss style of clothing for Icy, She's always working towards getting what she wants, and she has the resources to buy a wardrobe to reflect that. I wanted an old money kind of look, where she's very well put together. You can hopefully see it a bit with the pose, but to me, she looks like an Instagram post come to life. Another way I want to highlight her calculating personality is by having her hair up in a bun. She's always holding something back, always hiding something. Even in her witch form, it stays in a ponytail, because while she is more herself then, she never truly lets go. But Icy is tired of being held back. She doesn't care anymore if people call her evil. Her whole life was spent being told to be ashamed of something she never did. And one day she realized, if everyone was so scared of letting her be free, maybe she should give them a real reason to worry. Darkar found Icy about a half a year before she went away to school. He encouraged her to start learning magic. Her parents hadn't wanted her to go to Cloud Tower. They said they would get her a private tutor. But Icy knew that tutor would be useless. They would only stun her progress and keep her weak and boring. Darkar told her the truth. She was special. She was built for power. To do what her ancestor couldn't. Take control of magics. And with his help, she was able to go to Cloud Tower, either through subtle manipulation or direct intimidation. And eventually, once Icy fully trusts Darcy and Stormy, she lets them in on the Alliance. And she truly does want them to join her. Together, they could be the most powerful witches the world had ever seen. Stormy was shocked at first, but she quickly came around. Darcy was less shocked. And because of her new relationship with Riven, she hesitated. But soon she too agreed. 
I see believes this is her destiny. The world is pathetic, and it needs better leaders. When she was young, she learned of a prophecy her family feared. Like I said, they looked for guidance a little too often. It goes, With eyes of sapphire and frozen skin, an awesome power will blossom within. Icy believes it's meant to refer to the opportunity Darkar's given her, and that she will one day help rule magics. It actually refers to her sister, but that's another video. Oh, also, Icy's initial is baked into her outfit, unlike Stormy and Darcy who have metal charms. This is the real her. It consumes her, and so it is woven into the fabric of her outfit. She doesn't have a charm in gold or silver, since she's left behind her family and her status. We would meet Icy as a cold, closed-off person, but eventually, we'd watch her grow into the ruthless, vengeful, violent witch she has worked so hard to become. I really wanted my version of Icy to be scary. Of course, she's still a teenage girl, and she would be shown as one, but I think maybe she would just get less humanizing moments than her sisters do, or even just, like, be less likely to let her guard down in front of other people, things like that. Also, I really hope this reads, but she's definitely the most likely of the three tricks to kill by, like, a wide margin. <laughs> I'm quite happy with her backstory, though. I think the mystery of what happened to her sister would be a really fun reveal for a later part of the show. I do have some ideas for that. Also, I think it would be really fun to see her go against this version of Bloom. I feel like their personalities clash in just the perfect way. I really want to know what you guys think. I'm also curious if any of you have any ships for Icy. I know her and Bloom is a really popular one, but yeah, let me know. I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!